Yeah, I started uh, college in 1964, and um, I would frequently talk to my father on the phone. He was a, a stacker, a secret stacker. What did your dad have? Um, lots of silver. Hey Tim, we got another customer here from. Oh really? <laughs> Mid Coast Maine. Mid Coast Maine. Maine. That's great. <laughs> Thanks for uh, coming down here. Is this is your. How, how often have you come down to Tim? This is a th our third trip down. Without the politics, it's one of the best places in the in the world. <laughs> <laughs> there's two Maines. There's, there's uh, North and South. And yeah. Red and blue. <laughs> and your better half's here with you, right? Yes. I am. <laughs> Good to meet you, too. Nice to meet you, too. It's finally nice to see you, Yankee, in person. Okay. I will take a sticker of yours. I don't know if he will. <laughs> well, it's signed by Tim. I'll take it. <laughs> so what are you interested in buying today? Um, I was looking at those silver talents that you guys have been talking about. Ooh, yes. Some of those and maybe a gold buffalo. Gold buffalo. What do you think of that? Do you like silver or gold better? Oh, that's a tough call. <laughs> that's a really tough call. Is it? Yeah? I think I like silver. How about you? I like both. <laughs> okay, both. He's looking at both, the buffalo and the talents. Um, okay. Yeah, looking. Yeah, lots of, you're looking for a tube? Of the talents. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, I have to order more buffaloes. I order them every week, but the... These two tubes went really quickly in like record time, you know? That's pretty cool. Love the message on it. Love the design. Your eyes, yeah. Yep, that's, that's great. How long have you been stacking? What a year. Thanks to you. Oh, really? Thanks. That makes you feel good. I love it. I love it. <laughs> It's all your fault. <laughs> Are you helping others? Are you teaching others and and helping right, them? Yeah. My youngest boy is and his wife are. Uh, they've started their journey. <laughs> Beautiful, and it's nice that both of you are aligned in that. That is a rarity sometimes. I think it was me who got him to do it. Oh, I love that. My dad um, was a secret stacker. We didn't know about it, or at least we weren't. We were not clued into it <laughs> or tuned in i mean now that's, i look back and i think very i do remember yeah, sorting pennies thing. for yeah. him and mm -hmm. rolling them yeah. and looking for wheaties and and right. putting them in the book but never made a connection with the fact that he he was a stacker wow. uh, until we found his collection well they didn't call it that back then the collector but yeah. right. they they knew what they were doing yeah, yeah i started uh, college in 1964 and um I would frequently talk to my father on the phone. He was a, a stacker, a secret stacker. Um, but he, he, we collected coins when I was growing up. I mean, my father was collected everything out of change and when, mm -hmm. you know, when he was born in 1910, so there was a lot of good stuff in change. <laughs> and um, so we used to collect coins together and I had a paper route, so I'd, you know, I'd, all the money I collected, um, you know, we'd look through it to see if there was anything, and it, would, it used to be a lot. It was collectible. Uh, I had two bankers on the route. They gave me a silver dollar and a like a Liberty nickel or something like that. Um, so you know the things I wanted to keep. Since I only got two cents of paper, <laughs> my father would buy from the paper company, and then I had to work for him. You know, doing yard work and stuff to pay him back. <laughs> but um, so I'm in college, and I'm, I'm sure the discussion was about my grades. But um, he said, oh, by the way, they're taking the silver out of the coin, so don't let a dime, a quarter, a half dollar go through your hands that you don't put aside. I go, oh, thanks for the tip, Dad. I'm thinking, I can't remember the last time I held 50 cents. <laughs> you kidding me? What did your dad have? Um, lots of silver. Silver coins. He didn't, he would, didn't buy, well, what was available. I mean, there were no silver rounds, you know, the... Um, yeah, we're spoiled right now. Silver to be able dollars to do this, are right? still in circulation. Wow. You could still go to the bank, 
Uh, yeah. Even in 1964, you could hand him a silver certificate mm -hmm. and get a dollar's worth of silver and change. Can you imagine because doing it, that? It says that right on the bill. <laughs> we'll pay to the bearer on demand one silver dollar. Wow. Some banks would give you two half dollars or um, you know, four quarters or ten dimes. Yeah, most of the silver was just came from other countries, you know. And gold as well. Gold, gold was, um, it had been pegged at $35 an ounce. Uh, so, you know, if you happen to come across a coin shop where they had some foreign gold coins, um, that's about the, the price. You Did know. your dad have gold? He didn't have much gold. Okay. He had maybe one or two gold coins. He, he was, um, he, he had saved a lot of silver. And I remember helping him reinforce the closet shelf where he had these four big steel boxes, okay? And they were big boxes, you know, they were like file boxes or something. And I'm, I'm sure they had rails on the side so you could put hanging folders, but they were all full of silver. So I get, my mother was moving out of the house after he passed away and um, she said, well, you might as well go up and take a look at your father's coins and see if there's something you can use in the store. And so, so I go out there and I, <laughs> that said, been and fun. I said, this is not easy. So I kind of braced myself and I grabbed the box. I so I'm going to end up dropping this. Well, it was all empty. I had boxes. <laughs> Wait, the silver uh, was gone? It was all gone. And so I told my mother, I said, oh, there are four empty boxes up there. And she said, well, your father carried, he kept very good records. So when I go through his desk, I'll find out what he did with his coins. And uh, she moved into a condo and um, she called me about, I was, had to be about two weeks later. And she said, well, looks like your father sold all his silver in 1980. Now, if I know my father, he picked them absolute <laughs> highest price <laughs> and it looks like he bought Exxon stock oh but that was my father I mean he he played pro basketball there was no MBA when he was in college he played professional basketball and wow. everything he made from playing basketball he put away and he worked in all the same places that everybody works in college you know in the cafeteria mm -hmm. and other things and um, Your dad was a professional basketball player. He was, but it was a very different game. It was then. a different game. <laughs> <laughs> very different, yeah. You know, the two-handed set shots, <laughs> set shots and hook shots, none of this stuff. Well, he was very athletic. Was he tall? Um, he actually was only six one and a half. Oh, wow. Okay. But that's... Uh, his, a lot of basketball players. Basketball sure. players, that's what they, they all yeah. were. Some were, you know, like, like Bob Cousy, you know, they were... Less than that, less than six feet. But anyway, he invested all that money. You know, he, if he got $5 or $10, he'd invest it. Mm -hmm. And he graduated from college in 1929. He, he invested in the, whatever the concept of, and it was RCA, I, th I believe, the concept for television in the, in the 20s. That had come out, they, they, had, they had experimented, you know, because the telephone came out and all these other neat things. And so, in electronics, they were working on, and I, I'm pretty sure it was RCA, because that's the first television I saw was RCA. Um, so he invested in whatever the company was that had, was working on this concept. Uh, motion pictures, mm. because um, all the movies in the 20s were silent mm -hmm. movies. Mm -hmm. And everything he invested in movie theaters, he invested in those as well. Mm -hmm. um, but in 1929, he lost everything. And everybody did. That's right. Because if it, you know, even big companies, their stock went down to a dollar or two or something. Um, Tim, I think that could easily happen again. Right now, the markets are really based on what six stocks or whatever. It's it's really not the stock market of your father. It, it really isn't about P/E ratios anymore or anything like that. Oh, it's yeah. all momentum trading. It's all FOMO based. I think what's coming is a crash. But eventually, when the dollar is destroyed, it's going to be a melt up, not a melt down. We're going to see potentially what we see in the Caracas stock exchange when it goes sky high, but the value is, is, is nothing because the currency has been devalued so much. 
I think that's the bigger risk long term. That, that is a big risk. People are still uh, excited by um, fast growing dot com type stocks. And today it's all AI. Well, people don't even know what AI is at this point. And mm -hmm. look at NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's that's gone through the stratosphere. And, you know, they make good graphical chips and stuff yeah. like that. But um, so they're called a leader in AI. I like to have somebody explain to me exactly how they're a leader in AI. Mm -hmm. But that's the, that's the stock market now. And that, that drove this market up to, what, 39,000 or something. Yeah, all-time highs, right? And the S&P 500, yeah. everything is awesome right now. The market's great, right? Do you agree? I, I totally. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's all, yeah. all going to be good for us, yeah, right? Okay. <laughs> well, most people are buying indexes. They're buying index ETFs. They, they don't even know yeah, and, what and, is and, in their portfolio, Tim. Well, that's right. An ETF is only half thin air. <laughs> this is actually something behind it. Well, this stuff isn't thin air. This stuff is great. So you're getting gold and silver today? That's yep. awesome. Good for you. Yeah. Just a little bit at a time, the Yankee way. <laughs> I appreciate that. Good for you. All right, Tim, I'm going to have to bug out. Do you have anything you need me to do for you before I leave? Um, you could mail those packages if you Oh, want. these right here, Tim? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll get them over to the post office for you right now. Thanks a lot, buddy. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks uh, thanks for shopping here, too. I appreciate nice that, to too. You. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Take care.